Hey boys and girls, Miss Maddox here with Harley. Some of you were asking about her, so thought we'd include her in our video. Come back, Harley. So I just gave her some food. She's ready for snack time and story time with Magic Bone. I just gave her some spinach, so she'll stick around and hang out with us while we read. So we're up to chapter five in Magic Bone. We left off chapter four where he had an adventure and caused some trouble with the two-leg family. So he took off in chapter four and now we're up to chapter five. I think there's gonna be some more adventures. So here we go. Let's see if I could. It says, I don't like this London place anymore. I haven't met one nice dog or one kind two leg. Wait a minute, there's a two leg standing over there near a big machine with four round paws. It's like the one Josh has. The two leg is holding a yummy looking bone like the bones Josh gives me sometimes. And he's smiling just like Josh is when he's happy to see me. My tail peeks out and wags a little. Slowly my paws pad over toward the... smiling man with the bone in his hand. The man's smile grows bigger. I smile back at him. The man holds out his arms. I run right for him and then <gasps> the man grabs me, picks me up, and throws me into the back of his machine. The door swings shut. We start driving away really, really fast. The machine bumps up and down off the road and I'm getting thrown all around. Bump, bump, bump. Oh, my stomach feels sick. With each bump, I feel something ooey and gooey race up into my mouth. Bump, bump, bump. Blech. Ugh, the sausage and fries aren't in my tummy anymore. They're all over the floor, and they don't smell so yummy now. I'm trapped with that stinky stuff as we drive off. Wiggle, waggle, I want to go home. But I'm not going home. The two-leg takes me out of the machine and throws me into a room with bars. Let me out of here, I yelp as loud as I can. But the two-leg just walks away. My paw starts to dig nervously at the ground. Diggity, dig, dig. Ow! There's no dirt or grass. It's just a cold stone floor. It hurts my paws just to scratch it. There's no comfy couch to cuddle on here or any pillows to wiggle around. And worst of all, there's no Josh here to hug me and scratch between my ears. Suddenly, I hear Frankie's voice barking in my head. The place where they keep the dogs nobody wants. An awful place. Big cages with bars on the walls. They don't let them play or run or dig. Oh no, it can't be. But it has to be. It's exactly how Frankie described it. I'm in the pound. Oh no. But why? I didn't do anything that bad. I just ate some food and buried a bone in a hole. Then I remember what else Frankie said. Two legs hate holes. This is all your fault, I bark at my paws. You dug that hole. Two holes. Hey, look, boys, fresh meat. I turn around and come face to face with three of the fiercest looking bulldogs I've ever seen. Hello? Hello, I whimper. My tail immediately buries itself between my legs. I can't believe they threw... Oh, wait. I can't believe they threw another dog in here, one of the bulldogs grunts. Just someone else we have to share the grub with, another one barks angrily. Yeah, like we share, the third one adds. All three of them laugh. I try to move away from the bulldogs, but they follow me. You can't get away from us, the bulldog boys, the largest one warns me. We run this joint, don't we, Buster? Sure do, Bruiser, Buster answers him. We don't like strangers. Buster growls at me. What do you think about the newest edition, Barnaby? Who are these dogs and what do they want from me? The fattest of the three bulldogs waddles over and sniffs my rear end. I don't like the smell of him. He stinks like sidewalk pizza. Like what, I ask? Sidewalk pizza, a small voice answers. I turn around and see a little gray and white dog sitting in the corner. Sidewalk pizza is what Londoners call throw up, the dog explains, walking over to me. You eat something, feel sick, and then it comes back up and lands on the sidewalk. Watson, just hearing your voice makes me sick, Buster growls. Go back to your corner. The gray and white dog pads back to the far corner of the room with his tail between his legs. That's better, Buster laughs. 
I don't like the sound of Buster's laugh. It's cold and mean. So what did you do to get thrown in here, Buster asks. Oh, look, I want to pause right there, guys. Remember we talked about italic words yesterday? I don't know if you could see, but the word you is italicized. So when I read it, I would emphasize that word. He says, so what did you do to get thrown in here? He says, I don't know. I tell him I was just eating, and then all of these two legs went crazy, and so I ran away, and someone grabbed me and brought me here. Two legs are crazy, Buster agreed, but it's the four legs that drive me nuts. You mean dogs, I ask him? No, I mean the mini two legs, Buster says. Two legs that crawl on all fours. He means two legs puppies, the guy. Two legs puppies. The, oh, the gray and white dog explains. Okay, let me pause there. I was a little confused. So what do you think he's talking about? Uh, he says the two legs that crawl on all fours. And then the other dog says it's the two, lo two legs that crawl, uh, the, the two legs puppies. So that's tricky. We have the inference there. I'm guessing he's talking about babies because he says the two legs puppies, which would be people having babies, and that would be the little people. So he's talking about uh, babies. Okay, so let me continue. It says, yeah, Buster agreed. Some mini two legs in my old house kept crawling around next to me and pulling my tail. Finally, I growled at her. I mean, who wouldn't? But the next thing I knew, I was in here. She pulled my tail, and I, I wound up in the pound. There's two-leg logic for you. Two legs are the enemy. No, they're not, Wis Watson insisted. We just haven't found the right ones yet. I know there's a family of two legs waiting for me. You're full of fairy tales, Buster tells Watson. You're never going to find that family you're looking for. Watson looks like he's going to cry. That's not true, I tell Watson, trying to make him feel better. I have a two-leg, and he feeds me and plays with me and even lets me sleep in his bed. He's not bad. He's great. Oh, yeah, Buster grumbles. If he's so great, why'd he put you in here? He didn't, I say. It was the bone. The bulldogs and Watson all stare at me. You have a bone? Buster demands, hand it over. I put down my head and don't say another word. I don't want anyone to know where I hid my bone. I want to keep it safe so I can go back and get it. That is if I ever get out of this pound. That's the end of chapter five. So wow, we've come to the very first problem, a real big problem in our story. What is Sparky's problem right now? Yeah, stuck in the pound. So, I wonder what the solution to that problem is going to be. How is he going to get out of the pound? Hmm. Well, anyway, think about that. And we'll say goodbye for now. Harley, say goodbye. <laughs> we'll talk to you guys soon.